Hi there, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. And welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, The Fen Treasure. Our uh, last email came out on Friday, May the 3rd, and it got a great reaction, and we thank you folks for watching it and continuing to watch our shows. Uh, what we'd like to do is uh, share some of the comments that we get and comment back at you uh, as we see them. Ronnie, uh, this week you're up first. Yeah, uh, this one is from Mark Connor. Uh, I sent it uh, yesterday, and he says, Thanks for reading my comment on air. The one question I would ask Forrest would be, Forrest, how long did it take you to prepare the place you hid your treasure? Hmm. People have always asked the wrong questions, <clears throat> excuse me, in the wrong manner. It's more of an Indiana Jones hunt with lots of things you need to find and do. Not snakes. It, no. Had to be snakes. Had to be snakes. Uh, the book is very important. The poem and the book go hand in hand, but the book is the map. Uh, Forrest had said, don't forget a good map. What map could be better than the one he gives us? His treasure map is in his book. Uh, if you can figure out how to read it the right way, oh, and yes, you guys have come a long way. At first, I was one of those guys that couldn't stand what you guys were saying about the book and Forrest. An open mind and imagination does wonders to our world. Yeah, I really enjoyed that comment a lot. Um, that's indicative of many of the emails and such that we get as well, uh, where people at first, they didn't really care for us, Ronnie. Uh, and like, I didn't care for you much when I first met you either. Well, that's why, you know, kind of grew on me. Yeah. Kind of like a, it only took a 44 word. years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like a really good mold. I grow on you after a while. It's hard to get rid of you. I know. Yeah, I, know. I tried bleach and everything. Yeah, it didn't just, work? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up is Joe John. Joe John, I think, is one of those people that uh, is, has become a fan of the show. And he's got a great question for us to ask, which would be. Uh, ask about his most memorable campfire and was Forrest alone at the time? Did he have a sense of peace? <clears throat> Ronnie, I'm not much of a camper. Uh, I don't have any good campfire stories that I could share. Yeah, my campfire <clears throat> probably memories go back to... Uh, blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles, <laughs> sitting around the campfire. Yeah. Mongo-like beans. <laughs> We used to go camping, uh, John and Mike Savarch and I used to go up to, uh, on the Truckee River mm -hmm. and uh, go trout fishing, and if we didn't catch any trout, we ate nothing but rice and vegetables. Dang. So, uh, but it was, that was real camping, because we slept on the ground, we didn't have cots or anything, we had... Little tiny foam, what would be equivalent to basically a yoga mat. Oh boy! Today uh, that we slept on, and that was it. And in Truckee, Truckee is cold. Historically, the coldest place in in this area. Yeah, to be so, sure. Yeah, so it was flipping cold when you woke up in the morning. You know, people do that a lot. They always go, "Hey, you want to go with us? We're going to go fishing and camping overnight." And I'm thinking. I'd love to fish. Is there a hotel nearby? Yeah. Because I can meet you. Where are you all staying? Yeah, I can meet you. Uh, and besides, where are you going to plug in a hairdryer? And you know, yeah, I sleep with a hairdryer on. <laughs> a full seven or eight hours. All right, what do we got? Okay, next one is uh, from Treasure Hunter. Okay. And his, his uh, remark here is in response to something we'd said last week that Forrest, according to another uh, watcher, that Forrest is getting to be hard of hearing. Oh, yeah, 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 And yeah. so he was trying to come up with some hints for how we might, you know, approach the interview with someone who is a little bit hard of hearing. And says? And uh, Treasure Hunter says, for hard of hearing people, it's better to talk at a normal pace, but with a bit of a deeper voice. Did you stretch before you talked like <laughs> that? I hope. And so I replied, how's that, youngster? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever thought we'd be saying that when we were 16 years old? What? Yes. Ah. Eh? Uh, music lyrics. A consistent commenter. Thank you. Hi, guys. I've been touting TTOTC for the last two years to help with solving the poem. It sure helped me. My question, questions, is the same that I asked here a couple of months ago. What kind of music does Forrest Fenn like? 
Also, what are his top favorite male and female singers? And does he like the singing voice of Jim Reeves? Jim Reeves was a fabulous singer. Yeah, singer. he was. And a, and a songwriter, too. Uh, Jim Reeves is, is uh, Music Lyrics' favorite singer. He says, I'm going to send Forrest an email to ask if he will do an interview with you guys. Oh. Since Forrest knows my situation concerning his treasure chest location, he will most likely say yes. Good. I will also make available in the email to him a photo of his treasure chest from a video still that I took last September 11th to show him that I'm not blind when I, Fred Johnson, wear my glasses. <laughs> I would highly recommend making and showing the interview with Forrest Fenn by May 31st. I plan on going back to his treasure chest this June or July. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Good on you, boy. Uh, yeah, he's a uh, uh, music, uh, music, music aficionado, this music lyrics. Yep. Uh, you know, my wife and I, music lyrics, always have a uh, argument, really, uh, about music. And she thinks it's the music and the beat, and I think it's the lyrics that make a hit song. Mm. Where do you stand on that, Ronnie? I think it's and you can't say combination of both. You know what? I, 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 for me, it's really the music because honestly, sometimes I don't even, I don't even look, listen to the, the lyrics. Someone asked me, "What's that song about?" I'm like, you know, know what? Never really gave it much thought. Get back, get back, <laughs> yeah. get back to where you once belonged. Well, I, if I like the, if I like the music, I like the song. So that's me. My wife goes music and I go lyrics. I think you got to tell a really good story. You can't just have a good beat. If you got a good beat and no good words, you ain't got shit. And you know what? There are songs, honestly, that I do, that I like the lyrics, uh, but still have a good, good music to them. But yeah, it's fewer and fewer these days. I'm really more, I'm, I'm all about the music. We Well, that's a great question. And if we set up this interview with Forrest... I think you've been so consistent and supportive at the same time. Uh, we definitely will ask a question for you. Yep. Uh, this one is from James Devine. He sent this while we were live last night on, oh, okay. on here. Oh, yeah. that's. We're going to start trying to do that on Friday nights if Ronnie doesn't have to work. Uh, we're going to be live uh, in our comments. Right. Not on you know, YouTube, but uh, on our comments. And if you've got any questions, concerns, whatever suggestions... Uh, we will be there at the same time. You can right. talk to either one of us or both of us or whatever. Post your question or Friday, comment and yeah. we'll, we'll respond immediately. And then we do a show the next day concerning all of those comments. Right. So yep. uh, be sure and tune in uh, or check back with us on Friday nights. Uh, so from James, he says he's got these uh, fan visit talking points. Okay, I'm ready all for right. them. Uh, ask him to tell a few of his funny little sayings like the one his dad told. Uh, and he's paraphrasing when he says, "The wishes in uh, the wishes to catch a big enough fish, so that when he tells a fish story, he doesn't have to tell a lie." <laughs> <laughs> That's part of fishing. <laughs> and then, uh, question: What is the strangest thing you ever found in the mountains? That's interesting. Ooh. Also, a gotcha. Fen told a story about a grave marker he tripped over in Vietnam. Yeah, right. Uh, it said something like, if you should pass my grave and want to please my ghost, pray for a sinner and smile at a homely girl. Uh, this is actually an HL mention quote. Uh, is Forrest telling us a fib about the grave marker? Hmm. Just to see. Yeah, to see if we we're paying attention. Uh -huh. He kind of likes this game, doesn't he? Yeah, yep. he does. Thank you, James. Appreciate your comment. Um, Robert Denning says, okay, I'm going to spell it out for people. People, people. People of Earth. Forrest tells us in the poem, the who equals himself. The what equals the treasure. The where equals the Rocky Mountains. The when equals 2010. How, the poem tells us how. The poem is so easy. Elementary stuff that's why a kid could figure it out. Hmm. A little cryptic. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want to say restating the obvious, but I think we all can agree on those. Heidi Lindstrom, she says, I would ask Fenn if he got the idea for the chest on April Fool's Day. Did you comment on that? I Ron? did, and I said uh, more than likely it was, I think, May 24th. I'm looking for the comment. 
but May twenty yeah, fourth is. is National Scavengers Hunt Day. <laughs> so that would be my guess. All right. Um, let's see. Rapala sixty seven. Thank you for the comment. Says love the X twenty two music. I'm sorry, but Ronnie and I don't know. I googled it. What that I, is? Yeah, I can't. I can't come up with it. But we appreciate your comment yep. anyway. Uh, J A Street says I enjoy your show, gentlemen. My question to Forrest would be. What is your favorite meal, including dessert and drink? Hmm. And I wonder. I, I put in there that uh, you mean everybody wouldn't prefer steak and lobster? I know I would. Uh, that'd be my number one. I don't know. He's 80-some years old, virtually, and um, we don't know if he's vegan. Yeah. He, he could be. We're, we don't know that for sure. But Looks to be in good shape. <laughs> he does. I would venture a guess that he's a carnivore. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a steak and a lobster... And you know what he likes uh, is a cheap wine, remember? Two buck chuck. Once a year he has cheap wine. Yep. So that, that's what we'll have for dinner if we interview him. We're going to spend a day with him. That would be the plan. Um, you know, have, break some bread. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Now, there's another one here. Uh, let me see. From Robert Nenning. He says, I figured out the, I figured out more of this poem in two months than people have in nine years. All right, all right. So I said, it's kind of hard to prove without the treasure in your possession. And we literally get four or five of these emails every week from people who have solved the poem, but no treasure. And I say, the proof is in the pudding. Mmm, <laughs> pudding. <laughs> uh, Tony Driver, uh, let's see. Uh, I would love to hear Mrs. Fenn solve. Oh. If she indulges in the chase, that is. And Tony Driver comments, great question, Steve. She has been the silent partner so far. Um, I'm sure she probably... Uh, she probably she's probably as interested in this chase thing as my wife was in my softball career. <laughs> So, which well, is to say not very. <laughs> yeah. uh, Heidi Lindstrom says, I saw a video last week of that Nevada nut job that broke into Fenn's house looking for the chest. Yeah. <clears throat> we viewed that, by the way. Yes. The cops were arresting him and Fenn's daughter, daughters were pacing about. The nut job asked the woman, is it real? Actually, what he says is, isn't it real? Right. Yeah. And she does not respond and seems to give some sort of a blank stare, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, I got to be honest. First of all, this is yet just yet another intruder that does not belong on fence property. Yeah. You got to respect his, you know, privacy. Well, not um, only that, but he stole <coughs> a box of clothes. <coughs> clothes, yeah. What was that all about? Uh, so, which makes it a felony. Oh, I mean, that's burglary. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe New, New Mexico might be a little bit different. But in California, that's a felony. And you go to you go to prison for that. So, hopefully, uh, there's, some, there's some kind of punishment for what he's done. Listen, nobody thinks in real life that he buried the treasure on his own property. Nobody with some sense of sanity. Right. So, I think that... I think, really, this guy was just going there. You know, Ronnie, think about that for a second. Burying the treasure or hiding the treasure at his house. Right. First of all, all he wants is privacy. Right. Why would he hide it in a place where he doesn't want people coming? Yeah. Uh, you know... Literally he, thousands of people. He doesn't want to encourage that to happen. He wants yep. just the opposite. It's not on his property. It's not in his house. It's not in his safe. All right. I think that's safe to say as eclectic, eccentric as he can be, he wouldn't do that. No. It just doesn't make any sense. So please, people, get over that idea. Yep. Now, this one is from Big Whoopi. Oh, good. I, and uh, she says, Gorman is really a good guy. I think people have really responded to him in a negative way because of his, uh, because he's eccentric. Uh, that's just the way he is. That it is. 
Uh, so what? When people respond to him in what he may take as offensive, they're always going to think he's crazy. Well, we're all in it to win it. Isn't uh, no reason why we can't all get along while, while we try. Bill really has been through some crap lately, but he keeps on trucking. Thanks for the show, guys. Keep up the great work. And I basically said, you know what? I'm still in touch with Bill. He emails me weekly. Um, and so, and I think he is. I, I think if you don't know any eccentric people, then you might take Bill the wrong way. I, I happen to know a handful of very eccentric people. That's kind of, it is the way they are. And so they're very dramatic about things. Um, I think that, you know what? And I nobody can say that Bill is not their boots on the ground looking. Uh, I don't know if you've seen his video of the old uh, Model A cowling that he found out in the wilderness there. It's amusing, and it's, uh, it's good. So, hey, you know what? Cut Bill some slack. Phil and Donna, love your show, guys. Very interesting. Please keep up the vlogs. Thank you very much. Ronnie says we'll keep the content coming as long as you keep watching. We sure do appreciate that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a love right there. <laughs> a little love. Uh, Mel Fisher, thanks for your comment, Mel. We appreciate you watching. Oops, there goes a cord. Uh, good morning. The only things pissing where the treasure is hidden are bears and elk. As a comment you made about someone could go behind a tree to take a pee and find right. it. And he says, the only thing pissing out there are going to be bears and elk. And, and you know what? Everybody that I'm in contact with that is boots on the ground, that is their biggest fear, Ronnie. <laughs> biggest fear yeah. by any means. Yep. And then I said, uh, responded that I thought bears did that in the woods. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, or the Pope does. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's one or the other. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tony Driver says, thanks for the mention, fellas. That was funny. You even showed Sergeant Schultz. <laughs> That's right. Hogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. Anything else good? We are, uh, Ob Ord. Uh, yeah. I wish I could get out there. I got the poem figured out. Damn. Okay. All right, then. Um, my 7172 Dodge Coronets could fit that bill. Bombers, wait a minute, bees, Coronet Super Bees. That's a good car. Remember those? Ah, oh, I do remember. Scott Schaefer had one that yeah. he used to bring to uh, auto shop class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you replied to Ob Ord. Do you have that, or do you want me to? Read yeah, it? Uh, I said there have been more than a few armchair researchers that were very confident with their solve. The real challenge is when the rubber meets the road. So if, you know what, and I, I I'm, again, have uh, email contact with another researcher, as we call him, who sends me, uh, you know, content every day about what this particular, you know, uh, clue means mm -hmm. and where it leads you. Where warm water's halt. Right. And you know what? Uh, could be. But until you're out there... You know, beating the brush might also not be. Mm -hmm. And with the just the sheer number of people that have looked at the poem and that are out there looking, i got to think that every possible solve of every possible clue has been tried. So, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of geography to cover. Yeah, it is. Edna Perviance, hello Lou and Ronnie, great show, fan intentionally misspelled words, punctuation, etc. He tells searchers that he did this to see if readers notice. Think dumbing down as in society, reading, learning. This may be important, she says. Again, that chest, if actually out there, is in plain sight. And I am, oh, a very frequented place close to Santa Fe, New Mexico. I would ask Mr. Fenn if he could estimate how many big color full page advertising illustrations or ads he used during his time promoting Fenn galleries. Mm. I misspelled the word misspelled above to show the variation related to Fenn's method of wording. Yes, and that's the first thing that Ronnie and I picked up. Yep. You know how on uh, comments it says show more, show less? Right. I was on show less, I guess, and I didn't see that 
she explained she did it on purpose. Right. It was the first thing I noticed. Yep. Ronnie, look, she misspelled misspell. Yep. Uh, and then Heidi answers her back. You're right, Miss Edna. I also considered homonyms and considered Finn might have disguised the chest to look like the surrounding rock. Uh, and then I replied to uh, Edna and saying that some of the people have suggested that the incorrect spelling and punctuation is kind of part of the puzzle, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's possible you did it on purpose. That's just it. It's, you know, it's like a really convoluted recipe yeah and it's hard to figure out yeah ronnie let's do this one last are you on uh robert nenning nenning uh he robert says but he asks us why well i'll tell you why it's because you have to be there to see it i solved this poem the thrill of the chase is over people i know where the treasure is you said go get it tiger he says you meant go get it lead, lead searcher, searcher. <laughs> there we go again. And well, I guess we know who the lead searcher is yes, now. <laughs> and everyone who thinks they are claims to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Robert uh, Corvette Ronnie says, at Robert, if you're not the lead dog, the view never changes. True. Yep. Who is the lead searcher? Well, yeah. I don't know. I think you could narrow it down to people who actually put boots on the ground. Right. Uh, they're much closer than anyone who is uh, electronically transmitting their solves, etc. Well, and we'll know more. Uh, I'm not sure what the weather is like in the Rockies, but I would think that the melt is about to happen. So the well, Ron, snow... some people say June, June, July, and August is when it actually uh, yeah. runs off. And, and, and I don't know, here in our area, we got more snow this year than we've had in a decade. Mm-hmm. So if they had the same thing a little bit further east, then it could be. It could be even later than the year than that. Maybe just maybe just July and August, mm -hmm. uh, or just August. Who knows? And Fenn said that you know the the, the treasure is located in a span uh, somewhere from what do you say, a thousand to ten thousand two hundred feet. Right. Right. Um, and at ten thousand two hundred feet, it's much much colder yeah. than it is, say, 1,000 yeah. feet. And so the, the snow will last a lot longer up there, yeah. If your search is up high, and I don't mean mountain climbing, but in those elevations, you're not going to see any kind of melt-off until at least August, I'm right. sure. Yep. So please, if you're planning a trip, you know, take the weather into consideration yep. before you go out there. All right, uh, I think that'll about do it for this episode, Ron. Yeah. And we do appreciate each and every one of your comments. Uh, we've demonstrated here that we read every single one. Some make it on the show, some don't. And, uh, you know, if, if yours didn't, don't let that stop you from commenting because it's likely the next one that you have will make on, on the show, especially when they're creative. We enjoy them. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. If you enjoyed today's show, please give it a like. If you didn't, do you really feel it necessary to give it an unlike? Do you really? Is the show that bad that you feel compelled to hit the thumbs down? Because if you do and you're watching and you're hearing my voice right now, screw off. And we're going to find you. Go someplace else. <laughs> we don't need that. Yeah. You know, I've said it before. When, and we watch a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. Trust me, we do. If I start watching an episode of something and I don't like it, I don't give it a thumbs down. It's close. I just go someplace else. Yeah. You know, and, and one other thing too, YouTube measures how long you watch the program. Oh yeah. So if you're still with us at this point in the program. You rock. Thank you. You're a rock star. We really do appreciate that. Uh, the longer the duration viewed, the better according to YouTube. And we're just trying to have a successful show and, and channel. Okay, uh, email information, you've got all that. Our website, be sure and check it out. It's menaresosmart.com. And subscribe to our channel. You'll find that below. It's easy to do and it doesn't cost a dime. Lou Gallagher here. Corvette Ronnie here. We'll see you on the next episode of The Fen Treasure on Men Are So Smart. Thank you. <laughs>